I start off by taping my painting down really well using masking tape and I like to make sure that the masking tape is stuck to my board properly so I do use a ruler for this I'll take my ruler and I'll sort of swipe it down the edges of the painting to make sure no water goes underneath in this video I'll be using a range of different blues and greenish blues as well so I've got aqua green, I've got cobalt turquoise, I've got Windsor blue green shade, I've also got cobalt blue and turquoise. I'm going to flit in between these colours and whatever colours I do use I'm going to link down below for you so have a look in my description box. I've also got two purple colours that I'll be using. So this is dioxidine purple, it's a lovely violet colour, it's quite dark. And then we've got purple lake as well and these are in the Cotman range, so these are Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolours. I'm going to use Payne's Grey as well on the very dark areas. I'm going to use some lemon yellow here as well, just a tiny bit in a small area. So I'm not going to be using too much of this today. I'm going to start off by wetting the head of the bird. So the reason why I'm only wetting the head is because I don't want to take the water all over the body and then have the body dry. I do want to do this in sections so that we don't have areas drying on us. The reason why I'm wetting the paper is because I want the colours to blend into one another and just create a lovely soft effect. So that's the reason why I'm using the wet on wet method here. I'm carefully going around the eye and the beak area so I'm not popping water onto the beak area. I am going to bring a little bit out by the front of the beak because I want some of that water, or some of that paint, sorry, to bleed out into this area here. And I'm gonna take it past where I want that paint to travel. So I'm not gonna have the paint come out all this way, but I do want the water to come further than where I want the paint to stop. And that is so that we don't get a harsh edge. I'm also gonna bring the water down about this far. So I'm gonna stop the paint here but I'm going to bring that down that water further than where I'm popping the paint. So this is halfway, about halfway down the body past the top feathers, those neck feathers. So next I'm going to start off with dropping in some turquoise. And this is a gorgeous turquoise colour. I will pop the colour down below for you. I believe this is cobalt turquoise and this is the Winsor & Newton one. I'm just using the tip of my brush just to drop in the paint because I want that paint to sort of disperse and have gaps in between. I'm going to also drop in some Windsor & Newton blue, this is the green shade, and I'm just dropping that in. I'm using the tip of my brush just to add dots, so instead of actually painting large areas or dragging the belly of my brush across the page, I'm actually just using the tip of my brush and that is sort of leaving a really nice effect. Some of that paint is bleeding nicely onto the paper, but I do want some of that to come out a bit further, so I'm gonna drop in some more blue here. This area of the bird is going to be quite a dark blue anyway, so I'm just dropping in more pigment. That means it's got less water mixed into it. So I've got some purple now and this is the dioxidine purple and I'm just using the tip of my brush again and I'm going to bring that underneath the beak across the front of the bird's, what do you call it, <laughs> like his chin area, his chest area and um, I'm just dabbing it again. You can see that these areas here have become very fuzzy. Well don't worry about that because that's going to give a lovely sort of birdy, feathery, gorgeous effect. Anyway, so I don't really mind that happening. I'm going to wet the rest of the beard now. So I'm taking some clean water down those back feathers and on the body as well. So I'm making sure that I just miss those feet and the log and I'm just going to paint that water just up past those neck feathers that I've already painted just to get a nice blended blend, <laughs> a nice soft blend. That's what I was trying to say. I've got the cobalt turquoise now on my brush and I'm dropping that into the body. And then I've just got some Winsor & Newton turquoise as well. I'm dropping that in as well. And I'm gonna smooth that back tail feather because I just want it to be more blue. 
I've got aqua green on my brush now and I'm dropping that into the back feather, the back tail feather and also on the back of the body. I've got some Windsor blue now and I'm dropping that into the front of the body and then I'm taking my Dioxidine purple, my violet sorry, and I'm going to drop that into the middle of the body there. I am missing little areas, you can see I've left quite a bit of white within the bird so I wanted that to happen because I wanted some of the white of the paper to show through. I've got some Payne's grey on my brush and I was just painting those little feathers underneath there. I've got some permanent rose on my brush now and I'm keeping it quite concentrated at the front of the beak and then I'm going to take a damp brush with nothing on my brush so I have rinsed this brush off and I'm just pulling up that paint to dilute it towards the end of the beak because I want that colour to fade out a little bit. I'm also just going to blend the back of that a little bit. Now I've got some Payne's Grey on my brush and I'm just going to drop that into the end of the beak while it's still wet. So you can see that it's blending out and um, it's softer. So I am going to paint that on the top of the beak as well. And I'm just going to bring that down and then blend it out with a damp brush a little bit. While the rest of the bird dries, I'm going to work on the log now. So I've got some clean water, I'm painting the water onto the log and I'm also bringing that water underneath the log as well because I want some of that paint to bleed onto the paper underneath and give a nice soft feel. I've got some purple lake on my brush now and I'm dropping that into the log. I wanted to keep this layer of the log quite light so this has got lots of water mixed into it, it's very pale. I wanted that colour to be lightest at the bottom of the log but I do want some of that to bleed onto the paper underneath. So you can see some of that colour is bleeding onto the paper but it's ever so slight. Because that log area is nice and wet, you're getting a nice soft fuzzy feel to that log. It's keeping the colours nice and muted and very soft and that's exactly the look I was going for. So I'm just painting that purple lake all over that log there. I'm smoothing some of that paint out and taking some of the paint off because I do want it, it to stay really nice and light. I've got some Windsor Blue Green shades now and I'm dropping that into the log as well while that paint is still wet. I love this colour, it's kind of a greenish, sort of like a turquoise colour and I really like it. It's a new colour of mine so I'll link it down below for you. I just added some Viridian but I don't want that Viridian to be very strong so I did take a little bit of that colour out with a damp brush and I'm running the Windsor Blue green shade at the bottom of that log as well because I do love that colour and I wanted to have that colour at the bottom of the log and just let it bleed up into the, um, the wet area of the log. I'm wetting the back tail feathers now and I've got some Dioxidine Violet so I'm dropping that into that feather feather the back feathers I've kept this paint nice and light because this is going to be our first layer I do want to keep this layer nice and light and diluted so I'm just adding it to certain areas of that tail feather and I'm going to take it on top of that log as well so be very careful when you paint around this log the those feathers actually go behind the log a little bit so I did want those feathers to touch the log I'm bringing that paint up to the top of the wing but I don't really want that paint to go over the green that I've painted so I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm going to blend that colour out at the top. I'm going to continue to wet the body of the bird so I'm going to take this all the way down the back, the tummy area as well and at the bottom of the bird as well, the little bit that sits on top of the branch. I'm also going to wet over those blue feathers that I've already put down and that is because I want those two edges to blend together and give a nice soft feel. I don't want to have any hard edges there. I'm going to allow that area to dry now completely and while that's drying I'm going to work on the branch. The branch in my reference photo is kind of a brownish yellow colour but I want to take some of those colours from the bird and bring it into the branch just to give that a bit of interest and make it really colourful. But I don't want this to be the focal point of the painting so I'm going to keep those colours very light and very muted. While the rest of the bird is drying I'm going to work on the eye area now. I'm going to leave this area 
around here free because I don't want um, to wet any of this. This isn't completely dry yet. So I'm going to paint in the eye now. I'm going to start off with some Payne's Grey. This has got a little bit of water mixed into it. So I'm painting that on there. It, it's very dark. It looks almost black. I'm going to be very careful not to paint over the highlight that's in the, the bird's eye. So I have penciled in the highlight so I make sure that I paint around it. I'm using a very small brush. This is a size zero and this is a Princeton Neptune brush. I really like these brushes. They're good quality but they're affordable as well. I think I probably paid about five or six pounds for this particular brush. I'll link it down below for you if you're interested. Just have a little look in my description box if you would want to go and um, purchase that yourself. You can just click on the link. So I'm carefully painting the shape of the eye. So the the eye is very rounded at the back and then point is pointy at the front. I'm going to wet the head now so I've got some clean water on my brush. I want to keep the bird's head nice and light so I'm just going to try to keep that head as light as I can. I'm going to wet around the eye area and just underneath the beak as well and I'm going to take this water just past those feathers in the neck there so I want the paint to be nice and blurred and soft there. Next I'm going to drop in some violet so I want the chin area to be quite dark and one of the darkest areas of the bird but not as dark as these feathers down here so I'm just going to drop in some dioxidine violet there. I've got some Winsor & Newton Windsor Blue here and this is the green shade and I'm just dotting that on but I'm overlapping some of the purple as well. I want some of that previous layer to show through so I am skipping areas. I've got the aqua green from Winsor & Newton here and I'm just going to dot it in some light areas on the head. Like I said, I want to keep that the lightest area so I am going to leave quite a few areas white down the back of the neck, the head sorry, and underneath the eye a little bit. My paint is more concentrated now so that means it's got less water mixed into it. So this is turquoise and this is a Winsor & Newton Cotman colour. You can see that I'm just using the tip of my brush just to add little dots really. I've just got a damp brush and I'm just going to blend some of that paint out just to soften the edges a little bit. I'm going to drop in a little bit of Payne's Grey in areas of the chin area. I'm sorry if you can hear anything in the background, my little girls are up here playing now. But it's the only time I can find time to film, so <laughs> they're on their summer holidays at the moment. They're supposed to be downstairs playing with their dad. They, fo they follow me. <laughs> I'm going to paint some Payne's Grey now around the eye area and this is quite watered down so I've got lots of water mixed into it and as you can see that is spreading a little bit too far so I'm going to take a little bit of that out in a minute. With my damp brush I'm just going to take out some of that grey that's travelled a bit too far so make sure that you've only got a damp brush to sop up some of that moisture. I've got some more Payne's grey and I'm dropping that in so just on top of the eye there and at the back of the beak as well. I'm going to blend that out in a minute so I don't want a harsh line. I'm also going to add a little bit of that Payne's grey underneath the eye. I'm still keeping it light as you can see. While the rest of the bird is drying, I'm going to work on the beak now. So I've got a very thin brush and some Payne's Grey. I'm just going to paint a very thin line here. I don't want it to be, to really stand out though. So I am going to paint a really thin one and a little bit there as well. Then taking my ever so slightly damp brush, I'm just going to touch the bottom of that line to blend it out a little bit so it's not so harsh. I'm going to work on the feet of the bird now. So I've got some very pale 
Payne's Grey. And I'm just going to paint in the gist of the bird's feet. And one thing I don't like painting is bird's feet because I can't get the hang of it properly. But I'm going to give it my best go. So just fill in the main shape of the bird's feet. And then you can go back then and concentrate on adding more depth and definition and texture afterwards. I want that to actually look like it's attached to the bird's legs. While the rest of the bird is drying, I'm going to run a darker colour at the very bottom of this log. I love this blurred effect here, but I can see my pencil line, so I just wanted to cover that up a little bit. So I've got some clean water on my brush now, and I'm just painting that all over the log. And the reason why I'm painting it all over the log is so we don't get a watermark. And then I've got some Windsor Blue Green shade, and I'm just going to drag that across my pencil mark to disguise it. You can see that bleeding up into the log. So that's bleeding nicely into the wet area there. Apart from here where it's gone a little bit dry, but I'll just take a damp brush to that. So all you need to do to blend things out is take a damp brush, rinse it, dab it on your paper towel or your cloth, and then rub it along the edge of that mark just got some clean water and I'm just going to drop that into areas of that mark there just to create little blooms. Next I'm going to paint in the body and the belly of the bird. So I'm taking some clean water and I'm just going to apply that under these back tail feathers here. So all the way to the bottom where the feet are and then just the belly area. I want to avoid this area because I'm going to allow this to dry first and then work on this area here. So I'm carefully just applying the clean water and also up to those um, head feathers. Just go in above them because I want to get a soft blend here. So I'm just applying that water evenly, making sure that it is evenly um, painted. <laughs> As you can see, I've taken off some of that paint with me. Some of that paint is lifting and it's now being moved around. So just be careful. You allow this to dry completely and uh, don't rub too hard with your brush. I've got some turquoise on my brush and I'm just going to dab that into areas of the beard. So I'm going to take that mainly onto these back feathers here or the back of the breast of the beard. I'm not going to go down too far. Next I've got a green shade and it is one of the green shades that I've um, listed down below for you. For some reason my mind's gone completely blank and I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> so I will link it down below for you but I'm just having one of those days where my mind just doesn't work properly and it's just gone completely blank. Do you ever have days like that? Because I have a lot of days like that. I'm a mum to four children so <laughs> my brain is super busy all day long. I've got some aqua green on my brush now. I'm just going to dab that in too. I've got a little bit of the Winsor & Newton blue shade and I'm just going to dab that in two areas. You can see that I'm just using this dot in motion still. And I want to keep this area l quite light, so I'm trying to avoid that area there. I want it to be more of a light blue. I've got some purple now and I'm just going to drop that into areas just to darken up certain areas a little bit. I'm still using this dot in motion, so just using the tip of my brush and allowing that paint to disperse within the water and just bleed out. I said disperse, but <laughs> it's disperse. I don't know what's going on with my brain today. I've got a little bit of Viridian hue here and to be honest I don't want to put too much of this colour in here because it is quite an intense colour and it's very strong so I just want to dab in certain areas of the bird really just a few little hints of it i've got a little bit of permanent rose on my brush here and i'm just going to drop dab it into this area here and down the middle because there is a separation of feathers there but it kind of looks like a pinkish tinge to me so i'm going to pop a little bit of pink in there i'm also going to use this opportunity as well to just darken up underneath the beak here. So this is just the permanent rose that's on my brush. 
And then just going to darken up a little bit of that beak there. I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow on my brush just to give it more of a orangey tinge. While the tummy of the bird dries, I'm going to work a little bit on the eye. So I've got some Winsor & Newton blue um, green shade here. And I'm just going to paint in this little area of the eye that looks more blue tinged to me. So I'm just painting in that shape there. Then I've got some Payne's Grey on my brush and I'm going to paint in the rest of the eye. So I do want to leave some of that lighter grey undertone. So I'm just painting carefully around that, being careful not to paint the whole of that eye in the grey because I do want ever such a, a slight strip. The eye of a bird is really detailed. If you have a look, there are a range of different colours within the bird. Even if it just looks like one straight black dot it isn't, it is a range of um, shades of that, black or grey. Although the feel of this painting today is a loose feel, I do prefer to make the eyes of the animals very detailed and quite lifelike. I've got a little bit of the Payne's Grey here, I'm just going to paint that underneath here. Then I'm going to take my damp brush and I'm just going to blend that colour out. I'm going to take my white gel pen now and I'm just adding a little highlight here. So this is completely dry now, this area. I also use white gouache a lot and sometimes I do prefer to use the white gouache. I'm wetting the back wing now with some clean water. And then I've got some aqua green on my brush. It's a bit more pigmented than the previous layers that I've put down. So it's got less water mixed into it. It's still got enough water mixed into it to allow it to spread out though. Then I've got the Windsor Blue shade and I'm dropping that into the top of the wing. And I've made this slightly more pigmented by using less water so it's, it's quite dark. I'm going to wet the head area as well, so taking some clean water, just the top of the head and above the beak area. I'm going to paint just outside that head area as well, so then some of that paint will bleed onto the paper at the top. I've got some cobalt turquoise now, it's very watered down, and I'm just dropping in another layer in areas. Next I've got some Windsor Blue and I'm painting that on to the back of the eye area. I'm allowing that to spread out into the water while the paper is still wet. You can see that I'm just using a little damp brush just to blend some of that colour out just to help it blend out a little bit because I don't want it to be harsh. I've got some Dioxidine Violet now and I'm dropping this into areas. It is quite dark, it's quite pigmented, it's got hardly any water mixed into it, so it is very dark and I'm just using a damp brush then just to blend that colour out. I've got some Payne's Grey on my brush now and I'm adding more dark areas just behind that beak area and then I'm going to paint in a dark line at the bottom of that beak and then blend it out with a damp brush. I'm going to wet this back tail feather now, so just the bottom of it. I'm painting on some watered down Payne's Grey now in areas, so this paint, uh, this paper is nice and wet so I'm getting nice fuzzy blurred, um, like a blurred layer. It's very light and that's how I wanted it to be so I'm just going to drop it into areas of that back feather there. I've got more concentrated Payne's Grey on my brush now, so that means more paint and less water. And I'm painting it just on the top of that um, back feather. And then on the top of the log as well, I am going to take it into areas like in the middle um, and then at the top of those feathers where there's going to be an obvious shadow. Because this back um, this back feather is actually underneath those green feathers, if that makes sense. So <laughs> that area is going to be the darkest. And I do want to still keep this nice and soft. I'm going to use the aqua green now to paint areas of this tail feather 
and then I'm going to use some of the Windsor blue as well and it's quite watered down this Windsor blue so it's not very dark I'm going to use my damp brush now just to blend some of that color out and you can see that it's actually picking up some of that Payne's grey but I like that effect so I didn't mind that happening I did want a little bit of a blend there got some dioxidine violet now and I'm dropping that in as well I'm going to paint underneath this tail feather here with some very diluted Payne's grey uh, you have got a bit of a grey area there and um, I do want to keep it nice and light though. I've got some Windsor Blue and I'm going to paint that underneath there as well while that paint, uh, while the paper is still wet and then I'm going to use a damp brush just to blend that out a little bit. I'm going to take some Aqua Green underneath here, so in between those claws and then I'm using a damp brush just to blend that colour out a little bit. I wanted to blend out this uh, watermark that I've got forming at the front of the beard as well so I'm just taking a damp brush and gently rubbing my brush on the edge of that mark there and then I did notice there's a watermark on the uh, feathers here so I'm just using a damp brush. Now I've got some water on my brush so this is just clean water and I'm painting that in between the clothes and all over the log area. I'm wetting the log area once more with some clean water, being careful to go in between the claws and then I'm dropping in some and then I'm dropping in some diluted purple lake. And I'm just going to drop it into areas just using a few little dotting motions and um, making some little marks with the tip of my brush and just allowing that uh, to sort of create a log textured feel. So I don't want this to be realistic, but I did want to add a bit more texture. I've got some dioxidine violet again, and I'm running that, um, that is not. I've got some violet on my brush now, and I'm running that on the bottom of the log. So I'm allowing this to bleed up into the wet area of the log. Uh, I do want to have a nice soft edge there. I'm taking my damp brush as well and blending that out a little bit because I do want to make sure we get a nice blurred feel across that bottom edge. I don't want any harsh edges. And here is my finished hummingbird. I'm going to take the masking tape off now and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoy painting with watercolours, consider subscribing because I make real-time step-by-step watercolour tutorials like this. Have a lovely rest of your day, happy painting and I will see you in my next video. Remember to give me a like, it really helps this video to be found better and yeah, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye everyone.